Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. The SEC has absolutely no shame, right? No shame whatsoever, and you already know that. Well, let me give you a reason 11,594 as to why the SEC has absolutely no shame. They wrote a letter, it's a legal filing to the judge, asking the judge to reconsider her reconsideration regarding the Henman emails. I kid you not. So think about this. January 13th, we get the ruling from the judge that the SEC absolutely must hand over emails and speech drafts related to the Billy Boy him and Ethereum free pass speech. Yay for us. I mean, we think it's ridiculous that uh, the judge is saying, hey, it's it's just Billy Boy Hinman's personal opinion, what he stated during that speech. But you know what the good news is as a result of that? And it's very good news that since it's just personal opinion, it's not privileged deliberation, we get those documents. Now, the SEC objects to this, right? The SEC says, well, no, 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 no. Uh, okay, your judge, da, 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 da. slow down now, grab a train, right? The, m m Mrs. Judge here. Uh, in reality, it actually, it's actually the case that it's the official position of the Division of Enforcement of the SEC, not the SEC itself, um, that, uh, that, you know, that there was deliberation going on. So it's the official position of the Division of the SEC. And, uh, and as a result, all of this is, there's actually privileged information here. Can't, you can't let this get out into the wild. We can't be handing this over to the Ripple, to Ripple. And then just a few weeks ago, the judge came back with a ruling on that. So that was the first reconsideration on that. The judge came back and said, no. And, she, and then she actually scorned the SEC for even bringing it up in the first place, citing how ridiculous it was. I enjoyed making the video covering that. So we thought that was over, right? Surely they wouldn't come back and ask her to reconsider the reconsideration, right? Wrong. <laughs> they filed something late, late, late last night. We got the word of it thanks to attorney uh, filing of the XRP community and also thanks to John Deaton's crypto wall. So a uh, shout out to all them. Uh, but uh, get this, get this. The SEC wrote a letter to the judge now claiming that you, you can't be handing these Hinman emails over because there's actually attorney client privilege. I kid you not. <laughs> Completely absurd. So I'm going to go through the specifics. I've got uh, thoughts on this from a couple attorneys within the community. Uh, actually, uh, three I got Fred Rispoli, Jeremy Hogan, and John Deaton got a little something to say about all this. But before going further, I do want to be clear that I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So here is the tweet from Mr. Filan of the XRP community. Attorney Filan said, The SEC has filed a letter motion asserting the attorney-client privilege in connection with the Hinman speech. It was a six-page document, although page six was really just a signature line. Um, here is what XRP community member and attorney Fred Rispoli had to say in regards to this. He, he wrote simply, and this really cuts to the chase. I like this. He said, There's a lot to unpack here. But for now, I have to give the SEC credit. This organization has no shame and is more than content to use lack of shame as a weapon. <laughs> I love that. And then he says, uh, this is essentially a motion to reconsider the reconsideration motion that was already double argued. More to come. <laughs> Can you believe this is real life, folks? The SEC is really doing this. I, I just... I'm, if I'm the judge, who, who, oh, by the way, mind you, the judge already rightfully, professionally scorned the SEC for the fact that the first reconsideration, uh, you know, it had to be presented to them. Uh, what do you think she's going to say to this? I mean, I don't know for sure, but just as somebody who doesn't have a legal background, still just looking at this, the facts as I understand them right now, I'm just thinking if I'm the judge, I'm like, my God, these, I, I hope the judge starts picking up the term I keep using. I wish the judge would say, these asshats at that ass hattery over at the SEC are doing some dumb stuff. I, I just, I can't imagine like reading these arguments and thinking, oh, well, that's something that's good. That's a good point. I didn't consider it. No. I, could, could the judge really, really fall for I don't think after all of this. And a, attorney Jeremy Hogan, who, of course, runs the very popular YouTube channel Legal Briefs, uh, he had something to say, and I want to share with you his thoughts. Uh, he wrote the following just a few hours ago today, all up on the Twitters. If you are really interested in attorney-client privilege, then by all means, read on. But just know you are a little messed up in the head, smiley face. Well, I guess I'm a little messed up in that. I mean... And fair enough. I mean, I run a YouTube channel that I run literally daily, with rare exception to that, and I call it Moon Lambo, so there must be something wrong in the noggin. But anyway, he continues. Attorney-client privilege requires three things, and the SEC is going to have a problem with all three of them in this motion. 
Number one, attorney-client privilege requires a communication between an attorney and a client. <laughs> Sounds basic, right, guys? And then he says, was Hinman a client of a zillion different lawyers and non-lawyers who apparently gave input on the speech? If the speech was just his personal opinion, was he even a client of all these lawyers? See, so already right there, the, 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 the answer is obvious, right? Of course he's not a client. He's a director at the SEC. There are people under him responding to this, and, and, and Jay Clayton had some input as well. He's above him, obviously. Uh, no, he's not a client of his co-workers. Right? Does it need to be said even? Apparently the answer is yes. That's where we are right now. The answer is yes. We have to say these obvious things. Jeremy Hogan continues. Number two, attorney-client privilege requires the communication be made in confidence. There were 68 emails related to this speech. The thing I don't think we know, did all of the emails remain with the SEC? How many non-lawyers were carbon copied? This is also maybe a problem for the SEC. So w w was it made in, in confidence? Uh, so I would, I would say this, having read this thread already, uh, out of the three I would assume that maybe this is like the, the weakest point for, for people on our side, but I don't think it matters because the others are such slam dunks. Like, no, <laughs> right? Like, because whether it's or not it's incompetent, if there's no attorney-client privilege, then obviously the judge already ruled there's, there is no privilege here. It's just personal opinion. That's it. So not that so again, not that point number two is particularly strong for the SEC. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying of the three, and we'll get to number three next. Uh, this is the least helpful to our, our side, but still, the SEC is completely, obviously ridiculous. Um, and so then uh, attorney Hogan continues. Number three, attorney client privilege requires the communication have provided legal guidance. Oh, well, that's interesting. That's an important term. So the, the communication that, uh, that the SEC's claiming is just attorney-client privilege. And as a result, we shouldn't get it because you don't get to have communication that's attorney-client privilege. Uh, it has to be legal guidance. Okay. So then uh, Mr. Hogan says the following. This is the SEC's biggest problem and why its argument and its motion on this prong is fairly circular. The case law that the SEC is relying on is clear that policy discussions are not legal guidance. So folks, what was discussed? What was actually discussed? Well, here, here's, Jeremy Hogan breaks it down in his next tweet. Check this out. He says, so the SEC tries to couch the emails as telling Hinman what he could legally say. And although we don't know exactly what's in the emails, I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say that the SEC is stretching the concept of legal guidance here. If an attorney responded to a draft of the speech and said, Per the speech, XRP is not a security. Was she saying that her legal opinion was that he can't say that in the speech, which would be a legal opinion? Or was she saying that as a matter of policy, giving the speech would impact the SEC? So you can see exactly what he's getting at right there, obviously. Are they, are they, is it legal guidance or not? Well, it depends on how you're framing it. And so then he says, so the third prong of the test is where the SEC is really going to have the biggest problem. Was there true legal guidance being given by these attorneys? We will await Ripple's response. And if you read this far, go do something fun. That's enough boring torture for one day. Gosh, don't tell me what to do, Mom. <laughs> I love this stuff. And by the way, you're not the only one that likes this, Mr. Hogan. It's okay. <laughs> Um, and then there was uh, also this. And he kind of summed this all up in one very simple tweet. For If you just want to wrap your head around, if you had to present it to somebody in like a couple sentences, here's how you do it. Jeremy Hogan wrote the following. The main issue is whether the lawyer's comments on the Hinman speech was really legal advice. If it wasn't legal advice, then the email has to be given to Ripple. For example, I'm telling you things right now, but that's not legal advice. We are just discussing legal issues. There you go. And so that, that really, that, uh, it, the last part of what he wrote there, that really goes back to point number three in his thread. Um, and then there was also this. Uh, somebody named Nate, Nate within the XP community wrote to Hogan and said, how long will this delay the case? Can they prolong the appeals process with the attorney-client issue like they've done with DPP? That's the deliberative process privilege. 
And Mr. Hogan responds and writes, well, they've already succeeded in delaying this issue out for months. I think the only question is whether the email issue will be decided in time to include the emails in the summary judgment uh, briefs. And if not, does Ripple want to delay the case in order to get the emails? Ooh, good question. Well, uh, the emails are highly consequential. I wouldn't be surprised because look, I've talked about this before, so I'll just be brief. It seems to me like as far as what Ripple was proposing initially, even before final dates were set and before the judge altered those dates, uh, they, they seemed to they just wanted things moving to get the ball rolling on summary judgment to get dates set for that initially. So they seem antsy in that sense, but um, doesn't mean that. But I think they're hoping that the email situation with Hinman would have been settled by then anyway. If it's not. I mean, I'll tell you this. I, I don't know for sure what they think, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ripple wanted to delay if it wasn't settled by then just to make sure if, if they have the ability to do that. It sounds like from what Hogan's saying, uh, perhaps it may be. If they can, uh, presumably, they're so Im the emails are so important that they'd want to. I mean, think about this. To, 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 to ask the judge to reconsider the reconsideration, like, what is in these documents that is so detrimental? It, it must completely obliterate their case. It, otherwise, why are they doing this? Whatever is in these Hinman emails and the speech drafts must completely end their case, which also makes them bad people since they must know that and they're still proceeding. These are awful scumbag humans. Grimes, uh, grinds my gears, folks. And there's this from Attorney Deaton. He wrote, pay attention to this language. And this is from uh, one of the pages, one of the, the six pages uh, is a quote from it. The SEC seeks to leave to redact two comments discussing pending determinations before the commission found in entries 29 and 35, end quote. And then Deaton says, what pending determinations must be other digital assets? Grams, XRP, any no action letters after this? Well, yeah, good question. So we don't have the, 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 um, the information on that. And also in the document, I didn't read through any excerpts from it because I didn't think it was necessary for this video, but they did in the document, the SEC actually said, we're happy to provide uh, those entries, 29 and 35, for in-camera review, which means in-person review for the judge. So if the judge hasn't already seen it, uh, she'll be able to see this and then make a determine on whether or not uh, this this can be redacted. Now, th the judge did state previously that the SEC can re request redactions, but only within a very narrow scope. So it, it have to, they'd have to prove that there's um, th that whatever they stated in these emails or drafts would have to directly relate to something parallel, but it would have to specifically reference like a parallel deliberation that's outside it. So a completely separate deliberation running in parallel that's directly referenced, basically. That's in a nutshell, basically, what would have to be referenced there. So what are the odds of that? Very low. Almost, can you imagine, how many times would something be referenced? Because they wouldn't know that this is going to get brought up years later, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So I, I don't know what's there, and we're probably never going to see it. I don't think we're ever going to see the Henman emails, but could be wrong. I'd, I'd love to see them. I'd love to know what they've been trying to hide so desperately for so long, but I'll wrap up there. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.